Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update this channel daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we are discussing one of the most distinctive and impressive Omega accomplishments of the mid-2000s. Launched at Baselworld 2005, this particular Omega DeVille Chronoscope Coaxial Ratropont is a personal favorite of mine and was one of my watch heroes back in the era before I became a regular YouTube watch community guy. So this is a watch that I originally aspired to own and at a price of $12,100 during the 2000s, my student budget wasn't getting anywhere near this watch, but today, through the miracle of pre-owned, both you and I can get a little bit closer. 41 millimeters in stainless steel. The watch is fairly thick at 14.9 millimeters thick, but it does have that Gaudron style stepped case flank, thanks principally to the bezel that does allow it to slide underneath a jacket cuff, just not the tightest of dress sleeves. 41 is the size, believe it or not, it looks absolutely huge, but it is a true 41. Lug to lug, it's broad. This is probably its most impressive single dimension. 51.3 millimeters, it's broad across the wrist to the point that I would say probably don't attempt this watch if your wrist is under 14 and a half centimeters in circumference. But at 16, I actually fit this watch a little bit better than I anticipated, so my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears it well. And I was surprised that the lug spacing is only 20 millimeters, so that's the size to target if you want to accessorize. It looks broader. The timepiece features a very luxurious and price appropriate bolstered large rectangular scale alligator leather semi-gloss finish. You can see it's all black, black monotone stitch, folded profile, and then you get closer to the lugs and it becomes a sheer profile showing you the layers of construction. Underside calfskin, and the clasp is a substantial piece, though familiar to Omega fans. Twin trigger deployant. You press them both, it pops open. It's not friction fit, it's not a clamshell. This is the right way to do things. Omega's still using this basic design. It pioneered this design during the 2000s, and this would have been one of the original references. The nice thing is you can actually put the strap underneath the clasp, and once you've sized it, there are no minder loops or excess strap length flapping in the breeze. It's a secure and elegant system. The case is downright Baroque. You might remember these lugs from mid-century Omega dress watches, but although you can find shades of this design in Omegas from the 40s and 50s, nevertheless, the full-blown case form you see here is a Baroque product of the modern era, surpassing anything from the 20th century in its detail and grandeur. Is it over the top? A little bit, but then again, it's over the top with good manners and elegant proportioning of the individual elements, which is something that you cannot easily say about many of the highly stylized large watches from the 2000s. This one's actually wearing well with time. You can see that the crown side features relatively small sheer guards, but it does have a crown guard profile, and the watch does have a little bit of a sporting bent, being 100 meters water resistant and loomed. When we jump into the dial, you can see some of the features that help to make this watch so distinctive. First and foremost, the earliest example I can recall of a triple aperture date. The idea being that if the minute hand extends over the aperture, you can see the preceding and succeeding day and thus correctly judge the current date. The Overlapping scales have been utilized by different brands to varying degrees of effect, but with the principally silver-white tone of this dial, I would have to say that this is probably the best realization of this design on the Chronoscope series. Other versions of this with two-tone dials whereby the registers are a different color than the actual dial create a little bit of a Mickey Mouse aesthetic. This one probably the best detailed and with a balance of red and blue accents the most elegant. You'll also note the double semicircular overlapping concentric seconds register. This is another element that became highly influential and once more this watch is one of the first examples I can recall of this design being used with differential hand lengths for a seconds register comprised of two concentric semicircles. You can see that the dial has impressive depth, all applique hour indices, and a number of steps to the center with the register at 6 o'clock actually featuring an upward step, so several different focal planes. This is an impressive dial, but again, it's a lot. You have to have a taste for excess to truly appreciate this. Minimalist, it isn't. The timepiece does feature a Omega applique logo and marquee at 12 o'clock, so although there's a lot, it's all done quite well. Ratropont, you better believe it. There's a standard chronoscope that's just a chronograph. This is the Ratropont that allows you to time two events concurrently, such as two cars across a racetrack start finish straight. You know if the gap between them is waxing or waning as the laps wear on. It's also great for timing the kids' track meet. Now, 
the chronograph pushers, vintage style, pump in form, actuating a true high horology movement. This is based on a Frederic Piguet, but not the 1185. It's based on the thicker and somewhat more robust 1285. It features a dramatically layered set of bridges, and not one, and you can see it also features a dramatic unidirectional winding system, but not one, but two separate column wheels, and the actuation of this system is a little piece of theater that you and your friends will enjoy. Not one, once again, but two column wheels, both of them visible, 38 joules adjusted in five positions, 52 hour power reserve, robust and precise free sprung balance. The timepiece has the twin column wheels and it has a vertical clutch system, so the start and the stop of the second sand is always silky smooth with no jump or stagger. Moreover, if you prefer to just leave the second sand at center running and have center seconds because of the vertical clutch, you can absolutely do that. You'll also appreciate the fact that the core refinements of the 1285, including one the 1185 does not have, hacking seconds here retained. There's also a quick set for rapidly cycling the date. The watch offers a lot, and it offers a lot of everything. Style, complication, size, attitude, and I will even say distinctly 2000s character. Like the oversized watches of the 1970s that later became collectible nostalgia pieces, I think watches like this with this caliber 3612 that are just redolent of mid-2000s excess are going to be collectible pieces and nostalgic period pieces down the line. I know that my dreams of this watch are firmly rooted in that formative period when I became a watch collector. And just as in the collector car market, that's exactly how classics get started. Own this unconventional future classic on the watch box. And we're back with the Omega Chronoscope Retropon, a coaxial chronometer split second chrono. Own it and make it yours on the watch box.